So, I'm going to call out, start off by asking Ken Hopla to come to the podium and give us his presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Greetings, climate deniers. You know that the climate has been warming and cooling for hundreds of millions of years, with or without changes in CO2. And for much of the world's history, temperatures have been higher than today. Welcome, science skeptics. You know that mathematics run on computers can predict anything. But the predictions are meaningless unless they're confirmed by physical evidence. Good morning, anti-science beings. You recognize the difference between science and science fiction is physical evidence. After watch watching Jurassic Park, you did not fortify your communities against marauding bands of T-Rexes because you knew that a movie is not physical evidence. Apparently, followers of Al Gore did not get the memo. For thousands of years, humanity developed great civilizations and cultures without the scientific me method or one that was formalized. Polynesia sail, Polynesians sailed vast Pacific oceans using stars without understanding how the planes, planets are rotated around the sun. Starting about 5,000 years ago, the Harappan culture around the Indus Valley developed standards of weights and measures, bronze metallurgy, and especially sanitary water and flushing sewers without understanding bacteria, virus, fungi, and parasites that cause diseases. Also, they had a writing which no one today can read. Were they the aliens as described by David Legates last night? Starting in Europe in the 14th and 15th centuries, the scientific method was developed to systematize, not to systematize, but to inquire how do we know what we know? What is the physical evidence supporting what we're saying applies to the world around us? It became known as natural philosophy or the systematic study of nature. After the, con uh, the conflict between the Earth-centered universe and the planetary motions around the sun, things began to fall into place. Newton applied Kepler's concepts of motion and developed the law of gravity, which appeared to be universal. By 1900, the science appeared settled. Science is settled. A few universal laws appear to apply to all motions. And mathematics, Euclid's geometry, could describe all movement. Amazing accomplishment. Then about 1900, two things disturbed the settled science. The most important to several things other, was special and general relativity better explained certain observations that classical physics did not. Also, light, which appeared to have no mass, was bent by gravity. The second development was quantum theory, which blew up everything. Small particles can be wildly erratic. The exact speed and location cannot be predicted or even determined. 
So much for Euclid's mathematics. Adding to this uncertainty, beginning in 1859, John Tyndall used early experiments in what is called spectroscopy to develop the concept of the greenhouse effect. Spectroscopy is now defined as the study of the interaction between matter and electromagnetic magnetic radiation. But the con concepts of matter and radiation, light, were not known in Tyndall's day as they are known today. Tyndall was widely misunderstood by some of the most premier scientists of the day. Some of these er errors continue in what is now uh, called climate science, including the EPA's endangerment finding. The st uh, spectroscopy, the study of the absorption and emission of light and other radiation by other matter was very important to understanding different things in physics, such as quantum me mechanics, general and uh, special theories of relativity, and quantum electrodynamics. Yet, the IPCC finds those experiments unsuitable in declaring that green carbon dioxide is causing significant global warming. As Tom explained, SEPS examines questionable government policies, no matter how popular, to determine if the policies are based on rigorous application of the scientific method or just passing fad. It examines the integrity of databases such as described by Anthony Watts earlier today, and to determine if they have been uh, manipulated without compelling reason, and if the manipulations are clearly stated. Unfortunately, often they are not. We question the use of models for public policy unless, unless the models have been appropriately verified and validated. Validated against physical evidence. Comparing a model with similar models is not model validation. This is a process used by the IPCC. Both models may contain similar errors. So you really have nothing, you have done nothing. Further, logic can carry models only so far. If they fail any tests against relevant data, the models must be changed or discarded. Omitting critical data violates the scientific method. This morning, my colleagues, several of my colleagues at SEP will describe a few of the most significant omissions, the error of omission, by the UN IPCC and its American followers. David Legate. Thank you.